What happened? I don't know. I didn't slam the door. Maybe it was the wind. Better open it again. It's pitch black down here. It's locked. Locked? That's impossible. Let me try. Oh, no. All right, what's that? Where are you? I can't see a thing. Oh. NBC presents The Adventures of Frank Merriwell. There it is, an echo of the past, an exciting past, a romantic past, the era of the horse and carriage, gaslit streets, and free-for-all football games, the era of one of the most beloved figures in American fiction, Frank Merriwell. Merriwell is loved as much today as ever he was. And so the National Broadcasting Company brings him to radio in a new series of stories based on the famous books written by Gilbert Patton under the pen name Bert L. Standish. Today, The Mystery of the Iron Door. It's late Friday afternoon as our story opens. Afternoon classes at Yale have just ended, and Frank and Bart, accompanied by Inza Burridge, are entering the crowded post office building in downtown New Haven. I won't be long, Frank. I promised Aunt Belle I'd get this package in the mails before the weekend. Well, that's all right, Inza. Bart and I are in no hurry. No. Coach canceled baseball practice this afternoon. Hello, Frank. Bart, I thought I recognized your voices. Well, hi, George. I didn't know that was you ahead of us in line. Well, I came down here to pick up a registered letter. Say, I don't believe I know the young lady. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Burridge, Mr. Davis. How do you do? I'm glad to know you, Miss Burridge. You aren't in Frank and Bart's class, are you, Mr. Davis? Well, not George, Inza. He's a postgraduate. Yes, I'm taking special graduate courses at the university. And confidentially, he's one of the most brilliant men at Yale. Oh? <laughs> Ignore that, Miss Burridge. I'm little more than a drudge. Well, how are those secret experiments of yours coming along, George? Oh, what secret experiments, Frank? Secret experiments? Mine, that sounds exciting. <laughs> not very, Miss Burridge. Uh, but say, Frank, what's this that I hear about your geology class going uh, up to Echo Cavern tomorrow. Well, not the whole class, George. Just 14 of us who are interested in mineralogy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about that, Frank. Where is Echo Cavern? Well, it's a big limestone cave about 25 miles north of here. Mm -hmm. They've been promising us this field trip for a long time now, but this is the first weekend we haven't had a ball game scheduled. Well, the reason I ask is that I'm going to be up there myself tomorrow. Oh, more of your experiments, George? Well, I've been up several times the past few weeks. I'm hoping this will be my last trip. Uh, where are you staying? At the Choate Farm? The man who owns the cavern? No, at that little inn right next to the farm. Oh, sure. That's Henderson's place. Oh, that reminds me, Frank. <laughs> We're supposed to be over at the New Haven house to complete arrangements with Mr. Henderson. Oh, I know. We'll do it as soon as we mail in his package. Oh, you needn't wait for me, Frank. Go right ahead. Oh, it's all right. We have plenty of time and we're almost at the window. All right, who's next? He means you, George. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm George Davis, and I received this notice of a registered letter. Oh, didn't the postman deliver it? Well, I must have been out when he came, but it's very important. Well, now, let's see. It's, it's very valuable. Nope, the postman isn't back with it yet. Not back? Nope. Now, look here. A few people have no, lost no, it. No, Sonny, hold your horses. Nothing's been lost. The carrier hasn't come back with it yet. That's well, all. Well, when will he be back? Any minute now. You'll just have to wait. Next. Are you through, George? Yes, yes. Go ahead. I hope that blasted postman comes back with my letter. Well, it's tough luck. But don't worry. You'll get it. Now, Enzo, let's have that package. I'm glad we caught you before you left town, Mr. Henderson. We wanted to complete arrangements for our field trip tomorrow. Well, your geology professors already talked to me, boys. You'll want dinner for 14 out there tomorrow, is that right? Yes, sir, but there's one thing more. No? Uh, Bart and I are preparing a special paper on cave formations, and we were given permission to stay over until Sunday. Oh. We were wondering if you could put us up at the inn. Well, no, I don't know. I, I don't really open until summer. But we thought you might make an exception this time, Mr. Henderson. We won't be much trouble. I haven't any help out there yet. Just my caretaker. Oh, well, I suppose it can be arranged. It's just a one night to say, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, very well. I'll put you two boys up. Now, what time's your party arriving? Well, we'll get there on the 10 o'clock train tomorrow morning, and the whole group except Bart and I will return on the evening train. Then I'll have Parsons meet you at the station in the coach, take you right out to the cavern. Yes, sir. Now, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow at Echo Cavern. <laughs> Oh, here's Inza. She must have waited for us. Oh, we could have walked back to the campus, Inza. Why should you when I have a carriage right here? Hop in. Right. Well, we completed our arrangements with Mr. Henderson. That's good. Get out, Major. Get out. 
Frank, guess who walked by just as you went to the hotel? Who? That boy we met in the post office, George David. Oh, George? What did he have to say? That's just it. He didn't say anything. He walked by without even seeing me. I spoke to him, but he was so busy reading a letter, he didn't hear me. Well, that must be the letter he was waiting for. I suppose so. Maybe it has something to do with those secret experiments of his. Are they really so secret, or are you two just teasing me? Well, they're secret, all right, Enza. There are all kinds of rumors about them, but no one knows just what he's working on. I wonder why he goes up to Echo Cavern so often. Well, as a guess, I'd say his experiments have something to do with bauxite. There are large deposits of it all around there. Oh. Bauxite? Isn't that some kind of mineral thing? That's right. It's Wait. Used... Enza, stop the carriage. What's the matter, Bart? Whoa, boy. Whoa. Look there. Coming out of that alley, it's George. Good night. He's hurt. George! What in the world happened? I... I'm all right, Frank. Just a little dizzy. Here, get in the carriage. You look like you've been in a fight. I have. Well, what happened, George? Here, Bart, help him up into the back seat. Uh, right. Uh, Easy now, George. Uh, now, uh, do you want us to take you to the infirmary? No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right in a minute. Keep right on the way you were going. Well, all right. Go ahead, Enzi. Get out, Major. What on earth was it, Mr. Davis? I, I was attacked by a man, a footpad. Were you robbed? Well, he took my wallet. Didn't bother with my gold watch and chain. Was there much in the wallet? Only a dollar or two. But my registered letter was in there, too. That's the thing that I didn't want to lose. In the post office, you said that letter was valuable. Was there money in it? No, Bart. It, it contained a chemical formula, though, that, that's worth a fortune. A formula? Well, if that was a footpad who attacked you, the formula certainly won't mean anything to him. Yes, when he sees what it is, he'll probably tear it up. I hope he does, Miss Burridge. I can remember the formula, of course, but if it fell into the wrong hands... Well, let's hope he tore it up. I, I don't suppose you got a good look at the fellow, did you? Yes, Frank, I did. I, I'm sure I'd recognize him if I saw him again. Well, that's something at least. But you'd never seen him before. Never. I'll bet it was someone who was in the post office and overheard you asking about the letter. Possibly, Bart. He might have thought the registered letter contained money when I said it was valuable. At least I hope that's it. In any event, we'd better report this to the police. No, Frank, let me take care of that. Just drop me off at the dormitory, if you don't mind. Well, as you say. But Enza wouldn't mind driving past police headquarters, would you, Enza? Of course not. Oh, please. I'd rather handle this my own way. Uh, this is close enough to the dormitory. I'll get off here. Very well. Well, boy. Well. Thanks for everything, and... Uh, oh, please, I'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything about this. Uh, uh, perhaps I can explain more to you when I see you tomorrow at Echo Caverns. <laughs> I wonder what happened to George, Frank. He said he'd meet us here in the cavern. Well, here comes somebody now. He can see the light from around the bend. Oh. Maybe it's George. Hello there. That's you, Frank? That's George, all right. Oh, hi, fellas. Where's the rest of the geology class? Well, they've already started back to New Haven. Oh. We completed the tour of the cavern about a half an hour ago. Oh, by the way, I want you to meet the man who owns these caverns, Farmer Choate. Uh, this is Frank Marowell, and this is Bart Hodge, Mr. Choate. How do you do, sir? Glad to know you. Same here, boys. Hope you've been enjoying my cave. Oh, yes, sir. It's fascinating. Bart and I are particularly interested in these stalactite and stalagmite uh, formations. We're writing a special paper on them. And so? Well, I don't know much about them things myself. A cave's a cave to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can help you out on that, fellas. Stalactite formations are a specialty of mine. That's what we were calling on, George. Have you seen the stalactite and stalagmite that have united into one big column? No, but we'd like to. Where is it? Oh, right over here at the rear of this chamber. Come on, I'll show you. Where are you boys spending the night over to Henderson's? That's right, sir. <laughs> Queer duck, that Henderson. Sure makes him powerful envious that most of this cave is under my property, instead of his. Well, he seems like a nice enough person. Oh, he is, I reckon. Except we've been none too neighborly ever since I put up the door. The door? I'll show it to you in a minute. Well, here we are. There's your column. Gosh, Frank, look at that. A three-foot column from the floor to the ceiling. Oh, it's a beautiful specimen. We ought to make a sketch of it, Bart. But uh, what's this back here? Hold your light a little higher, George. That's the door I told you about. It looks like it's made of iron. It is. Put it up a couple of years ago to separate my part of the cave from Henderson's. He didn't like it none too well either. You mean we're almost under Henderson's property? Now, that's right, Bart. In fact, the inn itself is almost directly above the cave on the other side of that door. That's why I put it up in the first place. A couple of years back, Henderson used to sell admission to my cave, but... I soon put a stop to that. I uh, I don't suppose we could get a look at the cave on the other side of the door. You have to ask Henderson about that, son. 
I ain't had this door open since it was put in. Been locked all that time. Well, maybe we could ask Mr. Henderson about it tonight, Frank. Yes, we'll do that. Well, I'll leave you folks now. I've got a lot of chores to do before supper time. Oh, go right ahead, Mr. Choate. I want to show the boys some more of the cave. Stay as long as you want. Supper won't be ready for more than an hour yet. <laughs> He's quite a character, isn't he? Nice old fellow in lots of ways. Although, between you and me, I don't blame Henderson for being peeved about that door. Well, still, Choate has a right to keep other people from exploiting his property. Yes, I suppose so. Say, George, I was just looking at the wall of the cave over here near the door. What mineral composition is it, do you know? Why, yes, Bart, it's made up mostly of calcium carbide. The rest of the cave, though, is principally limestone. Oh, but come along, there's still a lot to see. Now, as we get up here nearer the mouth of the cavern again, you have a good opportunity to examine the limestone walls. Now, notice the formation of the strata along here. Oh, wait a second, George. Let me get this down in my notebook. Hello, in the cave. Someone's calling us, Frank. Are Mr. Merriwell and Mr. Hodge in there? Oh, here we are. Who is it? Parsons, Mr. Henderson's handyman. He sent me around with a buggy to bring you back to supper. Oh, that was nice of him. We're coming right out, Parsons. All right. I'll wait. Oh, we can go now, Frank. You and Bart have all the notes you need, haven't you? Oh, sure, George, sure. We have plenty of material, thanks to you. Yes, we really appreciate all the time you gave us. Oh, think nothing of it, fellas. I enjoyed it myself. Well, here we are. Oh, it's good to be in the fresh air again. Mm. Well, this must be Parsons waiting for us. Yes, and there's the buggy. Wait a minute. Oh, what's the matter, George? He's the one. Stop! Get out of my way! That's the footpath! After him, boy! Don't let him get in the buggy! Grab the bride! Get out! Boy, get out. I missed him! Come back here! No use, George. We'll never catch him now. I'd like to pay him back for that attack. So that's the footpad. Are you sure you had the right man, George? Why, of course I am. Didn't you see him run when he caught sight of me? There's no doubt about it. Henderson's own handyman, a thief. That's a strange development. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Oh, if we only had a carriage. Well, no use trying to catch him now. Frank, it's time I told you more about what I've been doing. Now, you're convinced this Parsons fellow ran off with that formula of yours? I'm afraid so. You see, Yale University has been financing me while I experiment to find a cheaper way to produce aluminum. Aluminum? Yes, Bart. It's pretty generally agreed that if it could be made more cheaply, it would be an invaluable material, as strong as steel and yet amazingly lighter. So that's what your experiments are all about. Yes, I've been working on electrolyzing a solution made from bauxite. That's why I did so much work up here at the Choate Farm. There's quite a supply of the stuff in the ground here. Well, things are beginning to make a little sense now. I wish I could say the same. Now, what's all this got to do with that man Parsons? Oh, wait, Bart. Let me finish. A man named Hall perfected a similar process over 15 years ago, in 1885 to be exact. Now, Hall has a factory in New York, and I've been working with him on the improved process. I see. Then that registered letter was from this man Hall. Exactly. It contained our final formula. Now, if that's what Parsons was after when he attacked me, we're in trouble. We have no patent as yet on the process, and anyone who obtained the formula at this stage might beat us to it. Well, I can see now how serious this is. It means years of research by you, Hall, and Yale University will all go for nothing. Right. Unless we can catch this fellow Parsons. Well, he'll never show his face around here after this. You can be sure of that. That doesn't mean we can't catch him, Bart. How can we start? By talking to Mr. Henderson. I want to find out as much as I can about Parsons. Oh, uh, one more thing, George. Yes? Uh, have you told anybody about this formula being Not missing? Not a soul. Good. Then don't. It might help if we keep it to ourselves for the time being. Now, let's go to the inn and find Mr. Henderson. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm amazed. Are you sure you haven't made a mistake? There's no mistake about it, Mr. Henderson. Parsons ran like a frightened rabbit when he saw me. I can scarcely believe it, Parsons, a common footpad. Why, well, hang it, the man's been working for me nearly a year now, and he came with excellent references. Do you have any idea where he could have gone, sir? Not the slightest. But if he turns up here for his things, I'll turn him over to the police. Oh, thanks. That's all we can expect. Oh, incidentally, Mr. Henderson, do you know whether or not Parsons was in New Haven on Friday for any other reason? <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, he was. As you know, I came down to make some arrangements for the summer season down at the inn. Parsons asked to go along to buy some gardening tools he said he needed. Well, do you think he might have gone back to New Haven? No telling about that, Bart. But I'm leaving on the late train tonight. I'll report it to the police back there. That's the best thing to do, George. Bart and I will stay over until tomorrow as we planned. That is, if it's all right with you, Mr. Henson. Sure, boys. I said I'd put you up, didn't I? Good. Well, we have some more work to do down in the cavern. <laughs> We 
we've got enough stalactite samples now, Frank. Let's go. Oh, just a second, Bart. Come over here near the iron door. Oh, sure. What's wrong? You smell anything like chemicals? Yes. Now that you mention it, I do. Smell seems to come from beyond that door. That's what I thought, too. What do you make of it? I don't know. Well, I suppose it could be the dampness affecting the bauxite deposits in the ground here. Possibly. Well, that deposit of calcium carbide George told us about. Well, it's nothing to worry about anyway. Well, let's go. Don't forget, we have a train to catch. Oh, we have plenty of time. I know, but I'm anxious to get back to New Haven and see if George found out anything about that fellow Parsons. You know, Bart, I've been thinking about that. There's something here that doesn't add up quite. Well, how do you mean? Well, look at it yourself. George was attacked by a man in New Haven who stole a formula from him. The very next day, 25 miles away, he runs into the same man. Now, somehow, that's too neat a coincidence. Yes, I see what you mean. If Davis decided he wanted to share the formula with just himself and not give Mr. Hall or any of the men the money, yeah. he could have worked this fake robbery with Parsons. Exactly. That's why... Bart, wait. Shine the light over this way again. What, here on the door, you mean? Yes. I want to get a closer look at something. Yes, I thought so. Well, what is it? Look at these hinges. Well, I don't see anything wrong with them. That's just it. The rest of this door is covered with rust, but these hinges are in perfect condition. And didn't Choate tell us this door hadn't been opened in two years? He certainly did. Well, you can see for yourself that it has. This door could stand a little investigation. Yeah. Well, we can't open it, it's locked. But we can get to the other side of it. There must be some sort of passage down here from the end. Then come on. Let's see what's back there. I don't see any sign of Mr. Henderson. Maybe he's in the kitchen. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, no, wait, Frank. Here's a note on the table. Oh, what's it say? It's for us. It says, uh, went over to Choate Farm for a few minutes. We'll return in plenty of time to drive you to the station. Signed, Henderson. Oh, now we can't ask him if it's all right to go down to the cellar. I think we'll go just the same, Bart. If there's anything wrong down there, Henderson will want to know about it as much as we do. Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's see, the door to the cellar's over here, isn't it? I think so. Come on. Hey, there's that chemical smell again. Yes, Bart. The same smell we noticed down in the cavern. Let's take a look down here. Leave the door open so we'll get a little light. Right. Go ahead. Bart, what happened? I don't know. I didn't slam the door. Maybe it was the wind. Better open it again. It's pitch black down here. It's locked. Locked? That's impossible. Let me try. Bart, what's that? Where are you? I can't see a thing. No. Come on, Bart. Snap out of it. What? What? What happened? Where are we? I just came to myself. Looks like we're in the cave. Where's that light coming from? Someone left a lantern burning over here. The oil's almost gone. I have to work fast if we're ever going to get out of this place. Here, I'll, I'll help you up. Gosh, I still feel a little dizzy. Well, what's this door? Well, it must be the way we were brought in here. I imagine it leads into the Henderson basement. Hey, look. Someone set a pitcher of water here and a couple of hunks of bread. Well, they must expect to keep us here for quite a while. What's the idea, anyhow? Well, we were slugged because we were about to discover something, Bart. No use trying that door. I've already examined it. Yeah, look at that. Solid oak braced with iron. We could never break it down. I know. How about the other end of the cave here? Bring the lantern. All right. The iron door. Well, we got our wish, Bart. We're on the other side of that door. I'm beginning to wish we weren't. Hold the lantern up, Bart. That's it. Look at the lock on the door. Yes, I see. Someone sealed up the old lock and put a heavy bolt and padlock on it. It's been used frequently, too. See how shiny the hinges are? Yeah, this is something. We're trapped, Frank. We've got to figure some way out. Well, you couldn't get through that door unless you had an acetylene torch. Say, maybe that's the answer. Acetylene. Oh, cut it out, Frank. This is no time for jokes. No, I'm serious. We can make an acetylene torch of a sort and blow that lock off. you're crazy. We've got nothing to work with. We've got everything we need. Remember this wall here at the side of the door? Sure. I see what you mean. It's made up of calcium carbide. Exactly. And calcium carbide plus water makes acetylene. We made the experiment in chem class just last week, remember? Of course. And we got that pitcher of water back there at the other door. I'll get it. Good. I'll get to work on this wall with my knife. We'll break out of here yet.
There. We've got a pile of the calcium carbide up against this bottom hinge. Now for the lamp chimney over the pile. Oh, this is crazy, Frank. How are we ever going to get the compression we need? You'll see. It's the same principle as that experiment. We pour the water through the lamp chimney on that pile of chemicals. That creates the gas, right? Yes, but the compression. Besides, how can we get close enough to ignite it? I'll show you. Hand me the water pitcher and keep that tin plate handy. All right. Here you are. Now. The gas is forming. Slap the plate on top of the lamp chimney and get back. Right. This should be far enough. This rock will shield us if anything goes wrong. Now for the bottom half of the lamp with the burning wick. I get it. The gas will be under pressure in the lamp chimney. And you're going to hit it with a burning ladder. I don't know if it'll work, but it's our only chance. There should be a big enough explosion to jar that door hinge loose. Well, there must be enough gas in there now. Throw it, Frank, and make it good. Crouch back, Bart. Here it goes! Wow, look at that. I think it worked. Let's see. It did. The hinge is loose. Come on, let's push the door up. Both together. Oh. We made it. We're back in Echo Cavern. Now, all we have to do is work our way up to the mouth of the cave and we're free. Right. Oh, that was a bad feeling being trapped that way. I wish we had a light. It's pitch black in here. Yes, I know. Hey, hey look up ahead. What's that light? I don't know. Wait a minute, Bart. Stop. Someone coming. I know you're down here. Put your hands up and come along peaceful. I'll fill you full of buck shots. It's Cho. Here he comes around the turn. Here we are, Mr. Cho. All right, now. Just get those hands up and come along. Well, I'll be jiggered. You fellas again. I thought you'd gone back to college. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Cho, point that gun some other way. Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> it's better. How'd you get back down here? I was up the mouth of the cave ever since you came out this afternoon. We came in the other way. Through the iron door? <laughs> well, I'll be dead blamed. How'd you ever manage that? It's a long story, sir. We haven't time to tell it now. We've got to catch ourselves a crook, and you can help us. A crook? Who? And where? Never mind that. Just come along with us. And better bring that shotgun with you. We're going to need it. Parsons, finish packing that stuff. We've got to get out of here. I'm ready now. We got a lot of time. Those two college kids will never get out of that cave. That's a lucky thing. I spotted them when I did. They were headed right for the basement, caught us red-handed. Well, it doesn't make any difference now. Is the buggy all hitched up, Henderson? Ready and waiting. Now, come on. Oh, well, holy smoke. What's the matter? Look out this window toward the choke place. What do you... Hey, those two kids, they got out of the cave. And they're headed this way. Choke's with him, and he's got a shotgun. Come on, Henderson. Maybe we can make it out the back way. No, hold it. We can't get to the buggy without being seen, Parsons. There's only one way out of this. Your gun? You're going to shoot it out with him? No, it's three against two, stupid. Parsons, listen to me. All anyone has to you against you is a charge of assault and battery. He can't even prove you stole the formula. What are you getting at? I've got to be free to go to Canada with the formula. Otherwise, we lose a fortune. Parsons, I'm going to pretend I caught you and took you prisoner. No, no, you don't. Do you think you can get away Easy, with it? Easy, Parsons. I'm not double-crossing you. It's the only way, I tell you. You got a small fine and maybe a week in jail. Isn't that worth the money we'll make on the formula? That's the same. It's I don't... the only way. Now, they're almost at the door. Get your hands up like I just caught you. Come on, hurry. All right, but I don't like it. Henderson! Well, Frank, look. He's Captain Parsons. Thank goodness you people showed up in time. We've got to get this man to the police. Better tie him up so as he can't make a break for us. Well, here's a piece of rope. I'll tie him. I'll keep him covered while you do. How did you get him, Mr. Henderson? Well, I was over at the farm looking for Mr. Choate. I couldn't find him. It was getting close to your train time, so I hurried back here. As I came in the door, I saw Parsons coming up out of the basement. For sure, he just slugged us and thrown us down there. Come on, you. Get those hands together. He pulled a gun on me, but I jumped him and got it away. He put up a fight, but I got the gun on him as he came in the door. That was sure good work, Henderson. You were right, Merwell, about him being the man who slugged your friend Davis. You have some proof of that, sir? This wallet I took away from him. It has George Davis's name on it. Well, I'm sorry to say there's no trace of that missing formula. I see. Well, he's tied up good and tight now. Put your gun away now, Mr. Henderson. He won't give us any more trouble. Good. You can take him to the police station in my buggy if you like. I have some things to do here. All right, Mr. Henderson. But first, I'll take that gun now. Get your hands off me. Grab his arms, boy. Sure, Frank. There. What's the idea, grabbing Henderson? The idea is our friend Mr. Henderson is as guilty as Parsons. Let me go. What do you mean? You might as well quit acting, Henderson. I was sure that stealing of the formula was the work of more than one man. And you were so sure of yourself, you gave yourself away to us. Gave myself away? What are you talking about? See, here, young fellow. Not two minutes ago. 
You said a formula had been stolen from George Davis. I happen to know that Davis reported only the theft of his wallet. So you couldn't have known about the formula unless you helped steal it. Well, I'll be... I never liked you, Henderson, but I didn't dream you were a low-down crook to boot. Well, he is, Mr. Choate, and he's going to pay for it. Come on, let's take them both to where they belong. Jail. <laughs> Goodness, Frank, that was an exciting time of it at Echo Cavern. A little too exciting, Enza. Well, you fellows really did me a great service catching up with that crook, Henderson. But how in the world did he know about my formula? Well, he had been spying on your experiments for months, George. For several years, according to his confession, Henderson had been trying a similar experiment with bauxite. Now, when you first came up to Choate's farm, he quickly learned the purpose of your visit and began watching you. And then when he finally learned the formula had been perfected and tested, he decided to steal it. Right. He and Parsons went to New Haven, waited for your letter to come, and stole it from you. They had arranged to sell it to a firm in Canada for $100,000. $100,000? My goodness, is it that valuable? More valuable than that, Miss Burridge. But, Frank, what about the iron door? What was the real reason for that? Well, just what the farmer Choate told us, Enza. About two years ago, Henderson began stealing supplies of bauxite for his experiments from Choate's cave. Well, Choate, understandably, got annoyed by Henderson's trespassing and had the iron door put in to stop him, even though he never knew what Henderson was really up to. When you stop to think of it, the iron door proved to be Henderson's undoing. <laughs> yes, Enzo. And don't forget that field trip of ours very nearly proved to be our undoing. And to think at the beginning of the semester, I thought geology was going to be a dull subject. <laughs> Exciting adventure with Frank Merriwell, beloved hero of American fiction, brought to you in a new series of stories by the National Broadcasting Company. And be sure to listen again next week at the same time when Frank Merriwell returns in another of his celebrated exploits. Frank is played by Lawson Zerby, Bart is Hal Studer, and Inza is Elaine Rust. Other members of the cast were Frank Thomas, Phil Sterling, Scott Tennyson, and Gene Leonard. Original music was by Paul Taupin. The Adventures of Frank Merriwell is written by Ruth and Gilbert Braun and William Welch. And the entire production is under the direction of Harry Junkin. lady, what are you going to do after you're graduated from high school in June? How about a career as a registered nurse? Nursing is a proud profession, and the pay is high, too. And when you're graduated from nurse training, you'll be able to pick your own position. Nurses are needed in hospitals and clinics. They're needed to staff research laboratories and health programs. And thousands of positions are waiting in private practice. If you're a high school graduate or college student in good health, you can begin planning your career today. Call your nearest hospital or school of nursing. Officials will be glad to help you on the way to a career as a registered nurse. Be sure to meet the Meeks one half hour from now, and stay tuned now for the adventures of Archie Andrews, heard over most of these NBC stations. Mel Brandt speaking. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. you got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time.